Hi, I'm Brian, and we'll be looking at the ACCA paper P5, March-June 2017 past year paper, and specifically we'll be looking at requirement B over here from question 3 of this paper. This is one of the optional, paper, optional questions which you can choose whether or not to answer. So on my right-hand side, again, we have my five-step approach to answering a P-level question. So as we go through this video, I'll be walking you through each of the five steps in order to successfully answer the requirement. So our first step, of course, is to assess the question. So let's read the question first. The first thing you would realize or be aware about is the action verb here, which they are using advice. Now, advice is a little bit different from the assess used in requirement A. Advice has all the elements of assess where you are supposed to have some judgment on something which is proposed to you from the question prompt. But advice also requires you to make a recommendation. Now, that's very important. So to earn the full six marks here, you will need to make a recommendation on based on whatever you are supposed to evaluate in this sense. So on the next part, we have three proposals suggested by the management consultant. So this means we need to read the question prompt and search for these three proposals which are suggested. This is data for you to answer the question. And we have an objective. We advise whether they will help to eliminate different types of waste identified under lean principles. So the topic that we are covering today has something to do with lean principles. So once we have assessed the question and looked at what is required, then we can go to the next step, which is to find relevant data. So as we go through the question prompt, you will find that in the this paragraph over here, you'll see that NGN has hired a management consultant, which is an expert in lean principles. So she believes that the WIS is wasteful, and she has made three proposals, which are over here to reorganize the warehouse to store high volume items close to the dispatch area, to shut down the additional warehouse, and to discontinue the cyclical inventory count. So one, two, three over here. Now, if you are looking at the question again, and you see, oh, there's six marks. So an easy division would be two marks for each item. So that doesn't mean, that means you don't really have much to write for each item, you only have to earn two marks for each of the proposals. Okay, so let's go to our model answer over here. I have the question on the top. And um, with, before we start answering the question, I'm going to bring you through what does it mean by the types of waste identified under lean principles. Okay, so first of all, what exactly is waste? Waste is anything which does not add value to the customer. Anything that you do or any prod, any inventory or stuff which happens within your business and it does not bring value to the customer is waste. Okay, but specifically for lean principles, there are supposed to be seven plus one types of waste. Now the examiner's answer is a bit different. He mentions two types of waste. One is the waste which does not add value to the customer. Another one is due to demands and movement. So in other words, um, how to say, a waste which is due to external factors. We're not going to do it that way. I'm going to just show you the seven types of waste. Uh, you do not need to write this in your answer. It's not necessary to put it out. And if you do write it, you won't get any marks. But this is just a refresher for you. So what is the first waste? Seven of them are from the Toyota method, and one of them is from Womack in 2003. <coughs> so um, I have uh, searched a bit for a good definition of these ways, and the best one I can get is from actually a CIMA, a CIMA past year, que past year question, which has the seven types of ways plus the, plus the one additional one. And you can download that paper from the About section of this video if you want to learn a little bit more about these types of waste, but we're going to go through them very quickly. First of all is transport, which means you are moving the good unnecessarily. Inventory, your money is tied up in work, work in progress or large quantities of raw material and it's just sitting there doing nothing, you know. If you're familiar with throughput accounting, uh, that will be something quite similar. We're trying to reduce that. Motion, 
the unnecessary movement of people and equipment. So if your personnel have to move from station A to station B in a very far away, that's wasting their time. <coughs> Waiting. Products which are idling for the next step. Idling here doesn't just mean the product itself. It also means the machine rental, the depreciation, your manpower, all this is wasted while you're idling. Overproduction. Producing more than demand means you are your cash is tied up in finished goods which you can't sell. Over Overprocessing, you have unnecessary production steps, things which are, you have an over-designed product which has too many complications when you could have done it with just one. Defects, cost of rework, so when, when you have a process and defects are built into the product and then you have no choice but to redo the product, this increases the costs of manufacturing the product. So these are the seven main ways which are identified from the Toyota method. And finally, you have a last one, which is uh, quite a philosophical one, which is producing goods and services which do not meet customer demands and specifications. So basically what this means is that if you are making a good which is useless to your customer, the products which your customers actually buy have to cover this useless good. So those customers are paying more for the goods that they want because you sell a product or service which they don't want. Okay, so that's it. It is a very short description of that. Please take a look at the SEMA a sample answer in the about section of this video if you want to know more. So let's just dive into our answer now. So answering the question, you have the three different uh, proposals which are over here. Let's start with reorganizing the warehouse. Remember that the question uses the word advice. So if the question uses the word advice, you need to make some kind of recommendation. Reflecting and making a judgment is not good enough. You must have some recommendation. Okay, so first of all, we have reorganizing the warehouse. When we reorganize the warehouse, the, the ways that we are reducing is the unnecessary motion of personnel during the picking process. You can imagine this in your house, you know, like imagine your car keys, your phone and your, your purse or your wallet is in different places of the house. One upstairs, one downstairs, one in the kitchen. So for you to leave the house, you need to go all over your house to get this stuff. So, but if they were all in the same place, it's reducing the amount of motion that you need to do in order to leave the house. You go and get your keys, your phone in the same place and just leave. So same way, if you reorganize your warehouse and put the high volume items near the dispatch area, yes, it does save some weight, uh, reduces some waste, it does save some time. Second thing is that once you have established that high volume items are near the dispatch area, <coughs> your workers would learn that okay, this is a high volume item, it's near there, they would, they would learn where these items are and this would reduce your, your uh, time needed to do a picking even more. So this is a lot of time saved on the picking, especially when they learn. However, in order to implement this successfully, one thing that needs to happen is that your WIS needs to be able to identify high volume items. You need to know which is a high volume item and place it there because if you're placing a low volume item because you thought it was a high volume item, you're wasting time and space in that area. Okay, and of course the fourth one is you need to mark out the area which you identify. This area must be uploaded into your WIS system. The codes must be there. So high volume items should be automatically coded and tagged to that area over there. Okay, so that's for the first proposal. The second proposal is to shut down the additional warehouse. One immediate benefit of shutting it down is it reduces some cost. What kind of cost? First of all, of course, warehouse rental. So you shut it down, you don't need to rent a warehouse, you save some cost. You also save some time from the movement of staff and products which are shuttling between these warehouses, right? But the problem here is that this proposal does not eliminate the main problem. What's the main problem? The main problem is that you have a large number of unsorted goods. They're just sitting there. They're not in the system. You need a whole warehouse to 
keep these unsorted goods. They're, they're, they're neither here nor there. They're not at the supplier. They are with you, but they're not in your system. And shutting down the warehouse does not solve this problem. So in order to shut down the warehouse, something has to be done to the WIS workflow in order to keep unsorted goods at a minimum level. So we're going to advise NJN a little bit further and we're going to say that the workflow should process the goods which have been received from suppliers immediately. Minimum human intervention, maximum throughput. Throughput means maybe you could even say like the number of um, goods pallets processed per, per hour or time per pallet that's coming in. They need to be processed and sorted into your existing warehouse space. So you could do that in many ways. You could have a totally integrated uh, inventory management system with your supplier. You could have RFID tags where the human doesn't even need to scan. It just goes through some, some gantry and you can, it scans the whole palette and, and the computer puts it straight away there. Alibaba does something like that. So um, that would be something uh, which you might think of implementing, especially for a warehouse at, with 5,000 over types of products. Okay. Now, for the last proposal, discontinue cyclical inventory counts. Let's talk about, again, the immediate benefit. You would immediately reduce the resources committed to this process. This process does not add value to the customer. The customer doesn't care how many times you count your inventory. The customer cares that their orders are satisfied. So whether you count 100 times or 1,000 times, if a customer's order is not satisfied, it does not add value. So what you save here is the opportunity cost. So these personnel which are spending their time counting inventory, you now can put them on activities which actually add value to the customer. They can do the picking or they can do the receiving of the goods and the sorting and that kind of stuff which actually add value. Okay, so this continuing cyclical inventory counts by itself doesn't solve the fundamental problem, which is the large number of discrepancies between WIS and actual inventory, in this case 8% or even more. So how do we eliminate this problem? It must be done in conjunction with discontinuing the cyclical inventory counts. We need to redesign the WIS workflow in order to reduce these discrepancies. One thing that can be done is that we can establish a system where goods and their locations can be reconciled simultaneously. So there is no mention within the question of any such system where a good and its location are scanned at the same time. There is no guarantee that a particular product is at a particular location. So what we can do is you we can have codes not just on the products which are being received, but also on the storage locations where the goods are put away so at the rack or the area or the zone where it is there's a code so what a personnel would do if you've seen any of those youtube videos on amazon or ebay or or alibaba what they would do is you have this giant warehouse and every rack has a code it could be rfid it could be barcodes and whenever a product is moved not only is a product scanned but also the location is scanned and all this is as automated as possible. So this way it helps to reduce the amount of time it, it takes for actual inventory to be reflected or sorry in actual inventory movements to be reflected in the WIS. Okay so that would be the end of my answer. It looks a bit long but um, if you write it this is in size 16 so if you write it it's actually much shorter is about two or three sentences per proposal. The items on the top here, you do not need to write. This is only for your revision. Okay, so basically a good way to think about it would be two marks per proposal. So one mark, maybe one and a half, maybe two sentences. So you're looking maybe at four, four or five sentences per proposal here. So remember, when you're using the action verb advice you need to make a recommendation just having a judgment on whether it's good or bad is not good enough all right um, thank you very much for watching this video please download um, if you need to my sample answer from the about section of this video there's another article which discusses the seven types of waste
which I find which are found over here is from a SEMA article. And um, yes, thank you very much and good luck with your exams.